Hello guys, this is Carlos Santana and welcome to a new video here in JS Education. Uh, so this is the third video for the course developing a headless CMS with TypeScript and GraphQL course and let's start. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, as always, we need to update our packages using NCU. And if you have, if you get some package to update, just after it run this command, just run npm install again. Um, okay, and then the first change we need to do is going to backend ESLint, and we are going to change the max length to be 80 in the in the backend, and also on the file for prettier RC, we need to reduce from 100 to 80. Then uh, we need to go to source and then we need to create a file a folder called GraphQL. Then inside we are going to create the folder resolvers and then another folder called types. So the first file that we need to create on resolvers, it's going to be called app.ts and basically is going to <clears throat> is going to have the um, resolvers for our query and mutation. So our query is going to be get apps to get all the applications. Basically, um, it's just a find all um a method from sqlize to get all the records from that table or from this model um when i use underscore rx for example here is because i'm not receiving anything basically uh and then the object needs to specify query and then the methods of your queries and then mutation and the methods that you are going to uh, resolve as a mutation. For example, we have the method create app. The create app is receiving the argument input, which is going to be an I create in I create app input interface uh, that we are going to create later. Um, and then we receive the models from the context. And basically, we are just calling models that app that create, and we pass uh, all the input object we have. Okay, so once we do that, let me create the types for this one. So basically, we are going to create a file called app.graphql inside types. And then let me copy this code here. So basically, in here, we need to create our type app specifying an ID, user ID, app name, identifier, icon, description, create that and update that. My queries or my query right now is only get apps, which is going to return an array of app type. Then my mutation is create app, which is receiving an input uh, that is going to be a create app input. Basically, I need the app name, the identifier, the icon, the description, and the user ID. The user ID is an UID, um, basically because it's pretty much um, the way we are handling IDs. Once we create the app, we are going to return an app here. So if you see, basically, this, this queries and mutation are being resolved here with this get apps and create app. So the name should match uh, the name of the methods on each uh, category, if it's a query or if it's a mutation. Then we need to create a new resolver called user.ts for our users. And basically here, this is going to be the code. Uh, we will have the query get users to find all the users we have in the database. And then we are going to have a mutation create user to create our first user. Um, so basically, we receive the input and then we execute models that user that create and we pass all the input. So 
pretty much is the same or is very similar to the app, but just implemented for users. After we um, create our resolvers, we need to create a file into resolvers called index.ts, which is going to be the merge resolvers. So basically from the package merge GraphQL schemas TS, we need to load the file loader method and the merge resolvers. Um, so we need to load all the resolvers that are on the same path and then merge the resolvers as an array. And the second parameter is the all, like to merge all together. And we are returning this. So what is it going to doing this thing is basically merging this resolver and this one into basically one one resolver, one big resolver. Um, and we need to do a similar thing for the types. So we need to create a new file for the scalar types. So we are going to uh, save this file as uh, scalar.graphql. And we need to add a scalar UID and scalar daytime types. And then um, we are going to create our user dot uh, GraphQL. So in this one, we declare the type user, which is going to have an ID, username, password, email, privilege, active, created ad, and updated ad. The query is going to be get users, which is going to return an array of users. And the mutation is going to be create user that receives this input and returns an, a user that you create. We need the username, the password, email, privilege, and active to create a user. Okay, and then as I said before, we need to create an index file into types. And we are going to do a similar thing as we did for the resolvers, but in this case, we are going to merge the types. So we need to import file loader, merge types, get all the types with this function that are on the same directory and merge all the types. So this is going to merge all the types into one schema. So now we can go to the index of our project. And basically now we can remove our type definitions that we created before and also the resolvers because right now we have specified our types and resolvers in a different location. So then we need to import it like this. We import the resolvers and we import the type definitions. So basically we are importing the index file, which is going to bring all together uh, each resolver and each uh, type definitions. Uh, also, I need to import the server configuration like this and the port is going to be get it from server dot port like this. Okay. And then let's go to the interfaces. As you, as you remember, I had some uh, errors here because I need to create those, those interfaces. So basically we need to go to source interfaces index and then um, in here, once I create the interface for app, I'm going to create a new one called I create app input which basically just extends from app, well, from the type app, sorry. And that's it, I don't need it. I don't need this one because this one is extended and creating or adding new fields that I don't need in the input, like ID, created ad, updated ad. I just need what it, whatever is on the app type. And then finally, we need to do the same thing for the user. 
just to extend the user type and that's gonna be your I create user input interface. So that's it. So let's run the project npm run dev and see if everything works fine. Uh, I'm going to open my um, playground here and I already play with some of the some of the uh, queries and mutations. So the first mutation, let me do this bigger, is gonna be mutation, and then you open uh, brackets or curly braces, and then create user. Then you need to pass your input. And then inside your input, basically you are going to specify like all the fields that you have in your interface, like username, email, password, privilege, and active. And then you are going to retrieve a an user. So now you will have an ID for that user, a username for that user, email, password, privilege, and active. So I already create sysantani. So I'm going to create sysantani1. Well, let me try to create again. I think it has a unique validation on the email and the username. So probably I'm going to get an error. Yeah. So if you see here, it says validation error, um, and then username must be unique. And that's because I already have a user. If, if we go to the query get the users, basically I already have a user sysantani. So I need to change this, but in, instead, um, like still, if I execute this one, I'm going to get another error because email also must be unique. I already have this user here with the same email. So let's change the email. And then voila, it's going to create a new user. So it's returning the ID, the username, the email. The password is returning an encrypted password, right? Do you remember when we defined the model, model user? we create a hook here. Before create, we are going to modify the password with the encrypted one. So this is how it's going to work. Like I'm passing the, the plain uh, password and I'm getting the encrypted password here. And then my privilege is got and the account is active. So if I go to get users, now I'm going to get two users, Sysantani and Sysantani1. So right now that I have these two users, uh, I already create an application as well. But for example, uh, well, you know what, let me, if I, if in the index, I put force on true, it's going to clean my database and then I need to put it back on false. So right now, if, if I try to execute this uh, query again, it's going to get empty users because I just removed all of them. So we can create a brand new username. Okay, so the ID has changed. Now the get users is gonna get just one. And then I copy this ID. And then if I go to create application, uh, this mutation, is going to receive an input with the app name, identifier, description, username. And then my application is gonna be block. The the identifier is uh, like the slug of the of the app name. Basically it's the same name but with lowercase and if it has the spaces it's going to replace with dashes. The icon is gonna be a color a color for that icon and then description is optional but you can put something there and then the user ID that is related to this application is this one. So when I click create, basically is is creating the application. It has changed ID. The app name is blog, identifier blog, etc. And then if I go to get apps, I mean the ID changed because a new 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 application. But then I can create a new one like let's say forums and then whatever here 
and basically it's going to create that one and the query from getting is getting both okay so it's everything for this video uh, i hope you like it um remember that if you have any question pre please drop a uh, comment or also you can join us to our slack community uh, the link is in the description um, also share our videos subscribe to our channel and do all the stuffs so thank you for your time and see you in the next video bye